Hello, you've caught me enjoying a rare all-nighter. My wife has selflessly agreed to be on baby duty. I don't have to get up early tomorrow and I am damn well going to make the most of it. That's right, we're firing up the old Nino Kuni 2 and sailing on the side quest tide, exploring hidden ocean caves and laying the higgledy smackdown on those horrible tainted monsters because the night is young and the night is ours. The trouble happens when the night starts to get old, however, and we really ought to be going to bed but we don't, do we? We're in denial. We can feel real life clawing its way back into our brain and we're throwing it out again. It gets to the point where you can pretty much hear the universe telling you to go to bed. You've been playing long enough. You really- Shut up, universe! Bed. This is my night time and you will not take it away from me! Here are seven signs it's time to stop playing games and go to bed. Yeah, right. Number one is the universe giving you a little hello, like someone trying to get your attention by awkwardly making eye contact. The power savings warning will pop up on your TV. I'm uh, going to turn off in, uh, in five minutes if you don't press anything, OK? I don't care for your passive aggressive tone, TV. What are you suggesting? That I've been playing a bit too long? that you're getting tired and you'd like to be switched off now? This is like Netflix asking me, are you still watching Nailed It all over again? You know, I'm getting a bit sick of insentient pieces of electrical equipment taking the moral high road. Here you go, TV. How about I turn the volume up? That should keep you alive for another five hours, shouldn't it? Yes, and it will need to because I'm not going to bed yet. The second sign it might be time to stop playing and go to bed is when your body starts getting hungry for breakfast. I don't know if you've ever been up late enough to experience your body doing that strange thing it does where it stops being full from dinner and starts getting peckish for your morning bowl of cereal, but it's weird. Almost like it's embarrassed you're awake to witness it. You know, your body is doing a thing it would prefer to be doing in private. It wants you to be asleep at this point, like when your computer prompts you to do all your software updates at four in the morning. It gurgles a bit, the last of the nutrients from your evening meal are absorbed, and you feel the early twinges of what eventually builds into that full-blown desire to both A, go to the toilet and B, eat all the toast in the world, usually reserved for when you wake up at a sensible hour. So you know what? Have some more snacks and shut up, because I'm not going to bed yet. Entry number three. Now, this is something of a two-parter and you'll only notice it if you're playing online. So, you've been grinding away on Overwatch with your friends. You're chatting with each other in a party and having a grand old time. It gets to midnight, the magic marker of time where sensible people start to drop off because they've got work or school the next day, or they simply want to be able to function properly when the sun comes up. One or two cool people hang around for another hour or so, but then it hits 1am. Now, 1am is like a hard barrier. At 1am, you either go to bed or you accept the fact you're in for a rough day tomorrow. Your two remaining friends hit the sack, but you're not quite ready yet. You fancy a few more rounds, or maybe you just want a quick nip to the tower to decode those engrams and then instantly break whatever you get out of them for parts. The crucial thing is you're still playing but no one else is. Your friends list is deserted. No one else is online. You're the last one in the club, jiving away to all the rubbish songs not even the DJ likes. This is part one, the online wasteland. And so you do the only thing you can. You jump back into some games with a load of randoms only, and this is part two now, all of a sudden, you're playing with people from a completely different time zone. 2am British time and the east coast of America is finishing up dinner and logging in. The west coast is just getting home from work. When you start getting owned on Overwatch by American children, it really is time to go to bed 
fellow Brits. No, no, I am going to keep playing and fly the flag for Blighty. Heck, I'm staying here until Australia gets home from work literally an entire day ahead of me. You may have the ashes, but we've got the play of the game. All right, all right, that was deliberate. I'm sliding into entry four, okay, which is you start to suck. You'll start to notice this, especially with games that have you performing a certain action again and again. Aiming and shooting, for example. Or passing and shooting. My late night game of choice is often Pez. I can easily find myself staring into the 5am abyss if I'm not careful. And the way the universe tries to pull me away from the brink is by making me suck. You get to a point where your thumbs have been doing the same thing for so long that they start to do it without any conscious input from your brain. This is when you're at your optimum level. You operate at the speed of thought, caress the ball about beautifully, and score some absolute bangers. It's like activating a limit break, however. You get a short burst of ultra power, and then your bar goes all the way back down to the bottom again. Brain fug. Everything starts to go wrong. Your reactions are slow. Your brain will be screaming instructions down your internal piping and into your fingers, but your unresponsive digits have clocked off. Ever had it where you know you've got to press X and you want to press X and you go to press X, but then you have to go to press X like three times before you actually do press X? Yeah, that. It's even worse when you're playing PvP. You lose your rhythm and start messing up simple plays. If you're playing a shooter, your KD ratio starts to plummet. Your body is telling you to cool it a night. It's all right, Thumbs. We will get through this. Just need to build up our limit gauge again. But since when was your body worth listening to? Game on. Entry 5. You're sitting there on your sofa and all of a sudden you realise you haven't actually been playing anything for about an hour. Instead, you've been aimlessly drifting through the home screen, scrolling through your library, while being unable to decide exactly what to play. Anyone else ever have one of those evenings where you seem to spend more time deciding what games to play than actually playing games? This can be a particular problem in the small hours. Hours. Maybe you've just finished a meandering side quest and your RPG fatigue has set in, but you're not quite ready to hit the sack just yet. You fancy cooling down with something a little calmer before bed. Your mind drifts. You scroll through nothing in particular on your phone. You compare your trophies to someone with way more platinums than you and feel a bit sad. It's at this point you realise multiple hours have passed and you've played nothing. Time to go to bed then? No, because your RPG fatigue has lifted now, so you can stick Nino Kuni 2 back on. Wahey, RPG second wind, back on the boat, back to hoovering up sparkly things, back to clobbering low level nothing in particulars and feeling good about yourself, back to playing games and definitely not going to bed. Entry 6. Bit of an obvious one, but here we go. You start to feel tired. Like, properly tired. Your eyelids start unravelling like a broken window blind. You can't keep them up. You yawn and then make yourself yawn again by yawning. The tide is going out and it wants to take you with it. No, no, I will not be sucked away. This is my game night. I'm staying here on this beach with my metaphor. We're straddling the line between it being really late and really early now. You should be going to bed, but we've already fought so much. We're through the sucking stage, we've decided what we want to play and there's still a good couple of hours of gaming time left. We're fighting through. And poof, the tide of tiredness recedes, leaving you feeling strangely refreshed Definitely not in bed and absolutely still playing video games. Victory. Okay, so your TV has had a mini tantrum. You've gotten hungry. All your friends have disappeared. You've started to suck. You've spent an hour doing nothing in particular and you've surfed the tidal wave of tired. The seventh and final sign you really should stop playing games and go to bed is... Oh, sunlight blinds us! Cruel birds mocks 
sauce. Sunrise, bird song. The night that was yours and that was young has grown old and is no longer. A new day is born. If you live with other people, your family, your partner, housemates, they begin to stir. They stumble downstairs, desperate to both A, go to the toilet and B, eat all the toast in the world. They peek into the living room at first, confused as to why you're sitting there before the realisation dawns. Don't tell me you've been down here playing games all night long. Don't tell me it's seven in the morning already. It is indeed, and really you've got two choices at this point. Either you finally go to bed and resign yourself to the fact that over the next week you'll be wrestling your sleeping pattern back from the clutches of nocturnalism, or, or you just keep playing video games. You know, the jet lag approach. Power through until next evening. I think the latter is the sensible option, don't you? And so there are seven signs it's time to stop playing games and go to bed that we completely ignored. Because games are great and sleep is boring. Let us know in the comments if any of this rings true for you, or if you can think of any other examples. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and join us again next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching.